in. So, I bring this up. Thank you for you. Got some, got some stuff come back. We did. So, uh, yeah. yeah. What is it? So we just got a, a delivery from Haskell. Yep. Um, just recently, like less than an hour ago. <laughs> yep. And uh, they are Puffing Billy locomotives. Oh, cool. So we'll, uh, we'll open them up and, and have a look. So, let's pop this on the top camera. Well, for anyone who doesn't know, Puffing Billy is uh, one of those narrow gauge trains which is actually operating up in, uh, where is that? Is that Olinda? Uh, no, Belgrave? it's um, the Puffing Billy is up in, it runs from what do they call that? Belgrave to Jembrook ultimately. Right, okay. Yeah, that's the, the length of it. Yep. Um, but they are, these are NA class lo locomotives. And the very earliest examples were built in the late 19th century. Right. About 1898, I believe. Yep. Um, in total, they built about 17 of them, and they built them until about 1915. Some of the last examples. 17 appeared. only. Yeah, only 17, and they were they were um, designed to operate on at the time Victorian, excuse me, Victorian railways had four narrow gauge lines, and um, they needed small lightweight locomotives that could handle the tight radiuses and the and the two foot six inch narrow gauge that yep. they ran on. Yep. And um, they're just iconic, and there's quite a few examples of these preserved, but they did wander all over um, Victoria's narrow gauge network. Uh, these these particular locomotives that we have are they're um, ON30 scale. Yep. So they're O gauge, which yes. is one to 48 scale. Yep. Uh, but it's narrow gauge, and what that is a reference to is the the width. For those that don't that don't know, um, it's the width between the the wheels. Yep. So this is scale to two foot six inches, and you can see that that's really, really um, very narrow. Yeah, it's very, it's the, very inside the uh, the chassis, isn't it? Yeah, hence the name, and it yep. is actually the wheels ride inside the chassis. I'll just see if I can get a bit closer. You guys can see all the fabulous detail on this model. So I guess the idea of uh, narrow gauge was um, it was a lot there easier to lay, was it? Yeah, I mean, it, it allowed you. I mean, the, the trains and the rolling stock and the infrastructure was smaller, lighter. Yep easier to build. Uh, you could build things with um, tighter radiuses, steeper yep. grades, yep. Um, and that was perfect for like up in the Dandenong Hills where, where you had a lot of these challenges. And it's such a beautiful spot and it's, it's wonderful that you can go up there and still experience that today. Yep. And these are a really like really good example of, of you know what's there now yes. and how they were in the early part of the 20th century until they were retired in about the 1950s. Um, so it's a 262 locomotive, so that's a reference to the wheels. So you've got two um, pilot wheels, yep. ultimately you have six driving wheels, these yep. ones coupled to the cylinders, and yep. then two trailing wheels. Right. There. So do you want us to have a, a bit of a closer look? So that's got really the... nice, I like the detailing around yeah. the, uh, what, what do you call those big chunky bits on the side of the, uh, the, the tank there? The, Are they tanks? Right here? Uh, just here. Oh, the water tanks, yeah. Yeah, water tanks? Yeah. Okay. And then you got the uh, the fine white lines, the stenciling. So that's really nice. They've done these in a in a wide variety of different colors. This right. is, I believe, candy apple green. There's okay. also Canadian red. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's a few variations of just like an austere black. Yeah. Um, and then there's black with um, red striping. Striping. And piping. Yeah, yeah. And those are all um, prototypical. So there's actually ultimately five different variations of this locomotive. Right. Uh, there's a functioning LED headlight. On either end. Yep. Pop Quite big, aren't they? Yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. And there's a, a tremendous amount of cab detail as well, which might be a little bit hard to appreciate on camera, but it's these are beautifully detailed. I mean, they're they're wonderful to run or even yep. just as a display piece, which a lot of people yeah. often use them for. Uh, we'll look have a look at the, the goodies that came in the bag too, because they really go all out. Uh, you've got replacement solid brass. Uh, these um, domes, so you can replace these with solid brass units if you if you want to, and they're nice. So the idea weighted. is to give it a bit more uh, weight. Yeah. To make it more stable on running. So you put them from the inside, I guess. You remove the body and pop them in. That's the correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. just a weight, um, and yep. then we'll open these as well, because they've given they've given you the locomotive without numbers. Uh, they've given you these brass, beautifully etched brass and and colored. Um, numbers that you can oh, here, there we go there we go um, for you to apply yourself and also so. finish was a red yeah definitely 
you got the um, Victorian Railways insignia of that time, and, and then all of the appropriate numbers for the locomotives that they produced. Yep. And a little oh, bag. This is, this is I, I think I know about this one. What, about, what do you know about that one? It's got real coal in it. Yeah. Yeah, real coal. So you get a bag of, it's not steam powered, so sorry to disappoint. Oh, it well, is electric. Better. Yes. But uh, yep, it's a bag of um, scale proportionate lumps of coal. Yep. Then you can load up the firebox with so you them. You put them at the back here? Yeah. Yeah. So pop them in there. They leave it blank, so you can you can do whatever you like, but or you can just drop them in or glue them in glue if you wanted in. to. Yeah. Yep. Um, and yeah, just a very, very lovely locomotive. Really nice touches. Definitely. Yeah. Which car did we, did we receive today? All of them. All of them? All five variants. Wow. wow. So we've every every variation of the um, NA class locomotive wow. that you could think of, we've got that now. Um, and we also have wagon packs. So we'll put this to the side for the time yep. being with all of its little bits. Here's your little wagon pack right there. So Haskell also produces um, packs of three goods wagons. They're like an open wagon. Um, and these were, uh, I believe, a prototype um, based around um, the kind of freight wagons they would have had when these things were in ordinary operation before they were part of the tourist railway. And we'll, thank you. So the, the three in here, they're all the same, are they? No, they, they might be slightly different. They're all numbered up differently. Right. Um, but ultimately, Haskell produces ten different variations of these packs. Okay. Um, there's, they're quite subtle. Uh, the differences are usually like either different colors or yep. different... Um, degrees of weathering distress uh, but we'll open one of these up i guess that sort of makes look. sense because the, a real train oh, they won't you. be identical will they no definitely not so they try and keep things as, as realistic as we can but some of some of these are presented in quite a factory fresh like as new finish like this one is yeah it's pretty clean isn't it then very shiny the weathering eventually yep but the detail is really good actually underneath is is incredibly detailed it's a lot of uh, railings and uh are they brake lines or what are they uh these are the truss rods right. um i think they're they're to do with like the the structural support of the chassis and the and the wagon itself yeah but then you also have um things like the the brake valves yeah too um, you've got nice knuckle couplers on either end um, and i saw that there was a bag of goodies which you need to apply separately. So these are things like um, the handbrake wheels oh, yes. for applying the brakes, and, and also probably um, coupler cut levers like yep. to allow you to uncouple the locomotive. And there's also a little quite shiny in there, isn't it? So mm. I thought there was a sheet of plastic. So yeah, if you want, you could you could go to town with the weathering and, and mm. sort of make it look a bit more distressed. But it's a nice factory finish look. Definitely. Mm. Um, and I think the other ones that are included are very similar, just different numbering so that they're not all identical. Yep. So with the extra handles and things, what do you need to do with them? Do you just need to glue them on with some CA? Super glue, yeah. I would say CA would be ideal. Yep. Um, you can see where, just right here, you can probably see where you'd probably insert one of the, um, one of those rods. Yep. Um, and then, I'm sure there's instructions in here that would inform you on how to um, correctly place all of those pieces or you could reference prototype photographs yep. of which there are plenty available um, so yeah nice put these two together oh uh, yes let's make you a bit of room here thank you guys yes. it's nice having a clean up crew <laughs> yep the wheels are coming off oh they are yeah this is what happens when you handle them too much that's so right, easy fix. We received them an hour ago at my link been playing since. Yep, <laughs> and I've already made a wheel fall out. Too much, actually, even the other side is, uh, oh no. is not right. <laughs> Tell me why, Jobs. In, in any case, for those that are new to this narrow gauge, these will run on HO double O scale type track, which yes. is probably the, one of the most common you know, um, gauges, really. Uh, the Hornby, the, the most common Hornby and, and um, Bachman will run on a similar size track, so very easy yeah. if you have already set, you can get this one to run there so it won't be the the sleepers the wooden sleepers yes. on the track won't be to scale that's true but but yeah um on 30 being o narrow gauge mm. is is ho scale track width track width so yes. yeah um if you run ho or double o scale equipment 
um, there's a good chance that this will work. It'll definitely work with the trap gauge. Yeah. Yes. You might have issues with um, tunnel clearances and platforms if you've already good point. put that sort of thing in place. Yeah. But yeah, effectively, if you just have an oval of HO or double of trap, oh, this will right. work perfectly yeah, on yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really nice. And here it is. Look at that. That looks actually really beautiful. Mm. That green really shows up very well. Yeah, it's, it's quite striking, isn't it? Definitely. A couple of years ago, uh, Carl did some weathering on, on one of those. Mm. I think we still have some of the photos on our Instagram. Yes. They were really, really nice, actually. Well, they were, it, it was, was one of the black ones from memory, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, um, oh, I think it was green. I think it was one of the green ones, but it was so nicely weathered yeah. that it looked like it was black. It looked like it hadn't been washed for a yeah. very long time. But I have an interesting story with these. I used to live in the Dandenongs. I right. lived in Cockatoo. Mm. Um, and this was when I was living with my parents for a short yeah. time and their property um, backed onto the Puffing Billy tracks. Right. So there'd be one train every day that would go from, most of the trains would stop at Emerald Lake yep. um, and then they'd make the return yeah. trip back to Belgrave. Um, and they'd have one train every day that would make the full um, trip all the way to Jembrook. Right. And then, and then it's people stop and have lunch and it would return. So you could sit there on the back porch and uh, literally waved to people on right. the puffing billy as it would right. go by and you'd smell the, the coal. The coal. And, wow. And it was just really, it was kind of like a, a step back in time in a way. It was yep. really fun. Wow. But got to ride on that a few times and it's totally worth the experience. If mm. you've ever wanted to do that, I would totally recommend Definitely. seeking it out. Beautiful. Yeah. Very good. So it looks like Kieran is really interested on some of those. He's, uh, he actually he's noticed that the wheels were falling out. Thank you, Kieran. Well done. <laughs> um, he also said um, apparently they call uh, those extra carts, uh, the rolling stock. Uh, yep. Gondolas. Gondolas. Yeah, gondolas. Yeah, gondolas. Definitely. And looks like here Kieran is doing some weathering to his trains. Just pop through some photos on our Facebook or mm. Instagram. We can definitely do a reshare of that. So send them over. I was good yep. to see. What, uh, what you guys get up to, actually. Yeah, for sure. Very good. Mm, so absolutely. thank you for this. Nice. Very nice. I really like these models. There's so much detail. And being a bit bigger, it's probably easy to add that extra detail and, and That's um, a bit more depth, really. I can see all the, the control levers inside. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, we should take some good photos later for uh, for our social this week because the, the interiors it's half phenomenal, really. Mm. You can see the all the levers and the controls. It's a great scale if you like to really super detail yeah, things. Yeah, that's right. Um, Very realistic. The larger, obviously, the larger the scale, the more the more detail yeah. you can pack in. Definitely. But that's one of the reasons why people love modeling like larger narrow gauge scales like ON30 so much. Definitely. Yes. Definitely.